This is a rally that seems to be focused on financial issues benefiting from a, a tick up in interest rates and a lot of those issues that would be vulnerable to a trade war. Boeing comes to mind, Caterpillar comes to mind. So they're holding their own pretty nicely. Dieter Bolton is here, uh, New York GOP uh, strategic advisor. John Burnett. Now, John is such a great guy. Uh, he was stuck in traffic, got out of the car some avenues from here, and uh, literally ran. I would never do that. But, uh, we have already told him not a single tough question as a result. I wish I could say Caitlin Yui Burns was so fortunate. She is not. No, anyway, it's good to have all of you with us. And again, thank you, my friend, for uh, putting up with all of that. All right, Dieter, spell out now what, uh, whatever hope people have that the Chinese are trying to de-escalate this. The Mexicans and other countries... Uh, not so inclined. The Mexico thing first. Uh, okay, Mexico thing first. About $3 billion worth of tariffs against U.S. goods coming south. Pork products of note. Pork um, legs. Pork I, legs. Yes. You know, like, be specific, dear. Yes. Um, you know, all sorts of fruits, nuts, bourbon, cheese. Um, so it's the three billion from Mexico coming in in July, three billion from the EU, roughly the same kind of products if you add in Harley Davidson's as well. But so that's six billion, and I feel like a lot of investors are saying, okay, six billion. But if China buys seventy million worth of farm equipment, I don't know. Maybe we can live with that. And it seems like the financials are actually pretty strong right now. Yeah, you know, it's interesting this back and forth and how it plays trade friction and all that. Is it your sense when you talk to a lot of your colleagues and friends? that they hope it goes away, because already they're raising a big hullabaloo about this. Fellow Republicans are about the president getting tough on trade, has to clear that with Congress first. Where, where is this going? Well, we can't hope that it goes away. We have to negotiate it away. The thing is, is that either you pay, my father always said, either you pay now or you pay later, right? And we've, we've seen the fact that we've gone into deficit after trade deficit after year after year, We've seen the effects of it, right? Now we're seeing policies. We're seeing a rebound. Now we have to actually tighten this trade so that way we don't have a, an enormous trade deficit with all these countries year after year. Because if that continues, Neil, we're going to see a catastrophic effect long after the Trump presidency. Um, you know, Ken, what's remarkable is that the Chinese are bending a little bit here. Seventy billion is seventy billion. Uh, the devil's in the details. Exactly what they intend to buy, but without the president's pressure, this wouldn't be happening right. at all. So you could make that argument, but you could also say, well, is this just deemed as sort of a, a, a face-saving gesture? What? Sure. It remains to be seen. And remember, the backdrop of North Korea uh, could have a lot to do with this in terms of our relationship with China. I mean, I'm looking at, you know, we're heading into a midterm election year right now, right? We're already in it. Um, Republicans are voicing concern on Capitol Hill because, first of all, this issue of trade has been uh, the key issue that they have disagreed with policy-wise right. with this particular president on. And also, they're facing the prospect of having uh, some of these retaliatory uh, measures uh, imposed perhaps by um, Canada and Mexico hit their home states and Donald Trump's core constituents. See, but a lot of them and are, so, I, I don't, uh, uh, if, there might be a method of what the president's doing and thinking it'll never come to that, but obviously they fear it will, it, right? They, they fear it will enough to raise the concern in terms of actual legislation. Now, right. that legislation really has no way of getting signed by this president, right? It doesn't have the, the pro prospect, I don't think, of having a veto-proof uh, majority support for it. But the fact that they are raising that concern um, is significant given their particular I think most of people should say that played a role, right, in, in California. We were talking about that 10th congressional district. Right. Right? That in, does that one district export something like more than two and a half billion dollars worth of agricultural products and I mean California by itself right would be the world's sixth largest economy yeah. and they export north of 16 billion dollars worth of agricultural products so I think in California that did play a role absolutely we... and it's a key point too because the economy is doing so well right um, because Republicans have been campaigning well, that on can this take idea. away a lot of sense right so even the trade yeah. deficit in the latest month was you know improved. But there is this concern of course yeah, that but, this would but negate those in Washington all of that concern a long time ago when the national debt was far below 20, 20 trillion. The trade deficits actually helped boost that up, right? So it's good to have concern now, but they should have had concern all along. Just like Donald Trump, President Trump told us this like 20, 30 years ago that we have to fix trade. Why? Because it will balloon into a huge national debt and become a global crisis. Do you worry, though, because Republicans are known as this free market, laissez-faire type party, right? And, and, and what's being advocated here is correcting the abuses of our trading partners by throwing abuses back at them. 
Right. If, 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 our, glo if our global trade organizations are not going to actually promote free and fair trade, then the leader of the free world has to do it. And that's what Donald Trump is trying to do. So and you think just reminding Americans about how the Chinese rig the system, how the European Union rigs certain trade deals, that education alone has, has opened people's eyes. Right. You know, if we can't fix it with trade, then we have to actually curtail the, the amount of, of aid that we give to foreign countries otherwise. Oh, so you take the Tony Soprano route. So <laughs> I mean, look. We can make life very difficult for you. We have to cut the fat somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I, I like I, what you said about it covering a lot of Ill, the underlying fundamentals. For example, the World Bank came out and said, you know what, this year the global economy is going to grow 3.1 percent. That's exactly what happened last year, 2017. Though, that would be the strongest year. That was the strongest year on record since 2011. So when you say... And our trade gap fell to a seven-month low in the latest month. Now, it's erratic right. and, and it actually increased with China, but, you know, a, a rising economic, you know, tide that lifts a lot, a lot, a lot of boats. It's a good coat of paint. Indeed. Well, there is that. <laughs> Do you guys worry, though, that, um, you know, something could go wrong very easily? You kind of touched on it here that... And if the solution is tariffs and, and threatening tariffs back at countries that we argue, to your point, have, you do the same, that's going to be kind of like a weird strategy going forward for future presidents, right? We'll, right? we'll fight fire with fire. Well, the interesting thing is, yes, Donald Trump has been talking about this stuff for 30 years, right? But he also talked about the need for these bilateral trade agreements, right? And we just haven't seen that um, come to fruition, right? So it's one thing to say, he hey... He likes one-on-one -on -one deals. He likes one-on-one -on -one deals. He doesn't like these big... But he has yet to actually make them, right? So he slaps these tariffs, and, and the, these countries um, come back with their own proposals as well. And yeah. we haven't really... In whether this South is Korea, he did work out something. Absolutely. But what also happened yeah. in that region... But that was, was kind of weak. That, it was weak, you know, but, I mean, you know, yep. just help me. Yeah. Like, yeah. At the point. Yeah. But then the, the rest of the TPP was like, that's okay, U.S., we'll just, you know, you don't have to... You're talking about the Trans-Pacific yeah. Partnership yeah. with Asian countries. Right. We, we kind of bowed out of that.